Ahoy! And greetings! I'm Roger Newbold, and welcome to episode number 31 of the Experience Photography Vlog. Wow! It's an important one today. Yes, sir. -y. My fellow photographer, my partner, and editor for this episode is Mr. Matt Rich. He's the one that fires the signal cannon before every single episode. And he can uh, hoist the anchor now and we're ready to set sail on this episode. Are you there, my friend? Where are you? In episode number 30, we talked about the changing portrayal of people in photography during the second half of the 20th century from our giant's point of view. This episode, we jump off the giant to cover, I think, a very important point. You should be aware of this and you should follow these things if you want to improve your work. Take it from an admiral. Yeah. Recently, I was invited to a photo group to uh, review and critique some of their photographs. First off, this is somewhat difficult for me, even with 50 plus years of experience under my belt. I remember back, oh, a long time ago now, having taken several workshops from the great photographer Al Weber and facing his acerbic wit as he critiqued a couple of my prints. I thought, this can't be too bad. I knew Al well and he had encouraged my work and he was actually smiling. And as you can guess, well, his smile was not really aimed at me, probably somebody behind me. Then it was damn the torpedoes and ramming speed, Captain. I lost my smile. Pretty sure I lost some weight from the backside too. I felt embarrassed. The sea was awash in flaming wreckage of my heart and my reputation was strewn in burning rubble. After sinking down, you know, like 10 or 13 fathoms, his hand reached in, pulled me topside, and then he finished up his critique with, well, nice work. See figure B. Well, if this was nice work, I could hardly wait to hear about <laughs> what others were going to be said about after my demise. I don't recall hearing the battle stations alert again, as others in formation continued on. After the meeting was over and a personal private moment, Al commented, boy, I hope you were strong enough to take that for the whole group. I think there were some that would have lost their lunch, burned their cameras, and uh, never returned if I hit them with the big list. That's when I, the Admiral, Get my metal straight here. Begrudgingly, see figure C, I realized, realized I shouldn't have viewed the critique so intolerantly. It was for me. It was for me to grow and for others to comprehend that there are a number of items you should take into account about your own work. So I beg of those all of you, don't shoot the messenger, figure D. To be certain that I had boarded the correct ship and that I knew what I was talking about, I reviewed marked passages from books in my library. I also visited a number of websites about critiquing and, you know, what they thought should be covered. I know from my own past experience that generating a shaming experience is flat out unwise. Well, 
shaming experiences are developed by attempting to manipulate someone else into agreeing with you and your way of seeing. And a critique is not judging who's right or who's wrong. It's not even about judging whose photo is better or worse. It's not, in most cases, even about the subject matter at all, which is very personal and independent. Criticizing or attacking the subject does not aid one in being reviewed with viewpoints about improving their skills, their composition, or their technique. Albert Camus said, whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Well, basically that's true, but who needs an anchor around the neck? Art generally requires a safe harbor for gestation and creation. Gene Fowler, a writer, said, writing is easy. All you have to do is sit and stare at a blank sheet of paper until drops of blood form on your forehead. <laughs> If you're a photographic hunter, stalking something in particular, it may feel the same way. If you're a gatherer, you shoot first and then try to defend the idea after. Either way, your job should be just to learn how to make your own art in the very best way. The rest is only a matter of perseverance. If you're the one doing the critique, uh, have a genuine appreciation for art in general. If you're doing a self-critique, which I highly suggest before anyone outside your head sees this work, familiar, familiarize yourself with the qualities of art. See figure Once you know what you're talking about, it makes it easier to discuss undeveloped possibilities. Stuff in hand. A self-critique by all means. Take the time to be informed about what to do. Look for items of betterment. It is impossible to hit the goal if you don't know what you're even aiming at. If you are the one being critiqued, it's best if you exercise your right to remain silent. Yeah, even if you think whoever's doing the critique is full of diaper fodder, keep the boiling point low. You may accidentally hear something of unknown value. Now, let's get to some steps in critiquing for yourself. First of all, take a look closely at the photograph. Let your eyes scan across the image. Make sure that you have caught all the possible details of the photo. If something jumps out at you as being really good or really bad, note it. Now, interpretation. Talk about the photo for a little bit. Eh, this is the thing that most frequently overlooked when doing critiques. But it's one of the best and most useful things you can do for a photographer. Ask, what was your intent? Why are you taking this photo photograph? Now, analyze. State out loud. When I look at this photo, I feel, and explain what sort of emotional response you raise. it raises in you. Did you accomplish what you set out to attempt? Is the, photo, is the photographer in the audience on the same deck or even on the same ship? Discuss how to make a more exacting statement. Then look at the technical points. Take care of all of that. Is the photograph technically okay? This is not subjective at all. No, no. This is objective. This is exact. This has to be done. Look at the work. Theoretically, these should all be fundamental and easily accomplished. The creator either completed all of the following points, or they didn't. And that 
is tenement to failure in some way. Did you nail the exposure? Correct it in post-production. Well, did you? Did you spot the dust marks from the sensor and from the printer or from darkroom efforts? Well, they need to be taken care of. Is there any unwanted or undesirable blur? Now, this is, this is seen way, way too often. I, I get a lot of wrong focus points due to auto. <laughs> Boy, that guy, he can't focus. He doesn't know what you want. And it's a lack of photographer's intention. Now, wrong focus points are maybe due to the wrong f-stop. Not enough depth of field or auto wide open or auto got to f-16 or f-22 and we got too much diffraction and too much blur going on. Maybe we had a wrong focus due to motion blur or wow could it be too slow of a shutter speed because we weren't paying attention? Are the colors accurately represented? Now, you got to correct the amount of sharpening, correct amount of vibrance, correct the amount of saturation. Study the mood that was generated due to the lighting and post-production enhancements and color renditions. Is everything coordinated? We're, we're not talking about just what falls out of the bottom of the camera after you took the picture. Examine the utilization of focal length and the dynamic properties they brought to the picture. The angle of view, the depth of field, lens placement for capture. Were you in the right spot? What is the contrast like? This is just as important as sharpness. Is the depth of field correct for the image? Do you think it might have been better if we'd used a different aperture? Well, too late now, but think about it for next time. Is the image mounted or matted? Is it done with precision? Is the print surface scratched or abraded? Take a look at it at an angle. Is it distracting in any way? You know, one day I was at... Uh, a gallery it represented some of my work and there another photographer came in seeking representation he just popped in to show some prints and I watched as he laid out about a dozen 24 inch giant size prints explaining that he had just purchased a new and very expensive vacuum press to mount his pictures and a new mat cutter to cut mats that were most precise. And after a thoughtful amount of time, everybody sat and looked at him. The gallery owners declined to represent his work and bid him farewell. Well, as you can imagine, the photographer became annoyed, demanded what was wrong with his spectacular images. And the staff began to point out, well, yeah, well, uh, there's a, uh, you should have been aware of this. You should have done your own self-critique. I think critiquing is important. The staff pointed out small wipe marks. Don't brush the surface of your print with uh, your hand or newspaper or sandpaper. It leaves scratches. There are, unfortunately, there was a big beard hair trapped between the mount and the print and left a uh, really neat but distracting in, imperfection. Points that needed spotting, whether they were imperfections, and that happens, or highlights that were really there, but they were distractions. They were left crying out, looking at me, fortunately. It wasn't my work or my pride, but I listened carefully and learned a lot. There's absolutely no reason to impose second-rate work on any audience. If you have a scratch, ditch it. See figure F. 
I'd put a surface def defect in there so we knew what we were talking about. Five, look at artistic points. What do you think about the crop? And what about the aspect ratio? Does it enhance the image? Is the photo in black and white? Should it have been in color? Or vice versa? There's a good balance between foreground and background. The photograph may have worked better with a different prop or a different model. Take that into account. Good points. As a reviewer, this is where you point out what the photograph is about and why. This is always something to compliment the photographer about. If you're doing a self critique, now is the time to look and think, did I really do a good job? I'm not just dreaming this. Did I do a good job? Don't dash them on the rocks if it's not. Don't run them aground. Have a heart. The why bit is so important. If you can't tell why you like X, Y, or Z, there's no point in mentioning it. I like the sky. Well, that's, that's totally useless. Now, I like the sky is a better comment, and I like it because it's deep blue and because it contrasts nicely with the yellows and the reds in the fla uh, flowers or in the picture. And I think it's better and has more value if you put some time and thought into what's the good points. Doing a self-evaluation, you better be sure you know what you are evaluating. Then look for points worth improving. This is the point I save for last because you have made the photographer confident about their work. Now it's important to remember that the photograph has already been taken. The photo can't be changed. There's no point in making them walk the plank because of a bad photograph or an error. Tell them one or two things specifically that could be improved in this particular photo. Hey, clean up the dust. Turn it into black and white. Use useful suggestions that can be done in the darkroom or in the computer. And perhaps one or two points that you would have done differently, if they ask. There's no reason to become mean. I mean, even Captain Hook, evil... Mm, nasty man trying to destroy their very best. Come on, lend him a hand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, our time is up for today. Now, Matt and I hope you have gleaned something important. Something that you can improve your own workflow with. And you can share with others. You've learned to take time for yourself really, really look at your work. If you've enjoyed this, give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our site. Tinkle that little bell. You'll get the notices. Let all your friends know where they can find the best experienced information online. Take a chance and explore relentlessly. If you proceed using the steps that we've outlined today with kindness and caring. You'll be helping a fellow photographer. They'll grow, even build a few new positive relationships. You'll be fostering creativity with a new buddy while building stronger associations in your area. We do not long remember those artists who followed all of the rules and they were more diligent than anyone else. We remember those who persisted with compassion and ambition and imagination. So, until we meet again, I give you a tip of my Admiral's hat to you, and I bid you cheerio.